what a lovely occasion to be able to, what a great honor that I could actually share with, with you and with our, our audience some of the aspects how we can bring the arts into the solving dilemmas that confront us, especially now, you know, in this time when this, wow, <laughs> how shall I say, <laughs> imagine this moment, there must be millions of Zoom conferences going on around the world, millions, and such a problem, people are frustrated, you know, glued to the PC at home, kids screaming in the back and so on. So do you understand? So how, what can we do to help this situation? <laughs> and you know, when, when the music comes into play, when I pull my violin at such a meeting, at the beginning, and I just start playing. <laughs> As soon as I play, everything changes. What especially listening changes. People are startled. They are surprised because what happens with all these Zoom conferences is uh, we we basically connect on a rational side, abstract, and and the heart is left away. You know this is a problem. We have a digital wall, and yet can you see when music starts, what kind of feeling, what kind of energy comes? <laughs> Can you hear? It's like invitation to a dance. What kind of upbeat? <laughs> Gentle kind of invitation to a dance, but very special because the first phrase, it's this. You see, it's the same note repeated on the next level. In music, it is called octave and it has seven stages in between. You see, you have to arrive to the same on the next level. I call this a relationship between ego and I. And this is what we will talk today. How, with the help of music, how we can get from the, you know, normality to the uniqueness with help of music and then apply that to leadership. So this is the plan. Let's see how we are going to get. But, but in, in basically, I want to say, even if it is on Zoom or on Teams or on any other virtual way of meetings, we want to bring the whole human being into the picture, into action, into understanding, into insights. So, and that's where art can become better. So, well, let me ask this question. Many say, oh, I don't understand anything about art or especially about classical music. Don't worry. I don't expect any knowledge of music. It's about only having a good will to observe, to, to uh, open yourself up to something new. And I tell you, when we take arts, we create a very safe space. And that's nice because when we have problems in our companies, you know, you are driven, you are under pressure and it's so difficult to, to be free enough to look at it from different angles and then find good solutions. You know, you can't do that. But when we go through the, what I call, creative detour you know we go through the masterpiece of music and discover how music does when there is a challenge musical challenge and you know i will help you to to, to sort of go with me along and discover challenges and discover solutions and then you know we come back to the problems we face every day and suddenly we see a correlation there is a relationship between what happens in music and what happens in company. You see, I want to say this way, people always first say, well, what's in it for me? You know, what's the takeaway? What's the takeaway? I mean, we are very busy. We don't have time for music and all that. You know, what's the takeaway? Well, I tell you, there are just some really interesting things that happened. And this will be unrolling as we as we continue. Well, the first thing is, in music, we musicians, you, I tell you, we connect really 600 percent with what we do you know when we when we play and we we know it's now or never and then you're really there <laughs> okay, 
can you get? You don't do that pragmatically. You burn on all ends and you say it's a breakthrough. So you connect and, and, and that is a different type of, you know, relationship or communication than in, in business. So it's about this connecting. So this is an impulse for takeaway. If you get experience how the artists connect, then you wake up artist in yourself as a leader. And you connect also differently. You know, imagine orchestra. On one hand, on the orchestra, you have, you know, uh, great um, uh, individuals who have to be really good. And we have great leaders on the other side in the companies. And we have good teams in orchestra. And we have good teams in the business. So that's all the same, more or less. But on the next level, what do they do in both cases? Musicians, yeah, you know, musicians, I don't... <laughs> strange people <laughs> I'll tell you but once they start playing the masterpiece they turn into half gods they connect there is full of meaning fire yeah uh, purpose and how is it in business well they connect you know in business it's look it's like this uh, in business we have we have targets you know here we are now and the next next uh, quarter we want how do we get there if we want let's say five five million profit so we go like this no yeah we make it somehow maybe not in corona time but, <laughs> but look we artists have a different approach and it's like this <laughs> 50 million okay yeah do you get it I would like to hear you, but I can't hear you. Some people say, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, well, look, it's a very different approach, isn't it? Here is maybe 45 million value added. But the problem is that we don't go pragmatically. We have to have something happen before we start. And this thing that happens before we start, you know what it is? It is gathering inner, inner power before you start. So that your first step is absolute you know the first step must be such that it flies all over to some quite a different place than usually anyway so uh, the point is this is what we take with you is the identification to identify with what you really want to do or what you're doing in your business your organization the second thing it's very important is when you go with me now through the masterpiece as we will go you will see this creative detour. Remember, if you go through that and discover new things, then there is a creative jump at the end where you suddenly reflect this, what happens in music is very similar to what I meet every day at my work situation. And then you make a creative jump, you know, it's, it's called transfer, transfer from different disciplines. And when you have a transfer, something opens up it's not linear and then when you transfer it's like a spark jumping from one to the other and ignites fire of inspiration or fire of insight and then when you have this insight you make the change it's not me telling you what to do it is called empowering it's about empowering the first one is about identification the second is about empowering and the third one you know what it is I'll tell you, I meet people 10, 15 years after my workshops and they immediately remember. They say, oh, you are the violinist. You know, we did this change and this change. And that. In other words, the problem with, with any type of learning is that after you have insight and you say, yes, this is great, I will do it. On Monday morning, you go to your company and the old patterns overpower you. So you fall back into the old way of running business and this workshop didn't help. So it is so important that learning is emotional that you remember at most pressing, pressing time, you remember what you decided to do, what you resolved, that this I will now change. And, you know, this memory is so strong that it helps you then actually to transcend old patterns. So the, I'm just telling you a few things, how, how helpful the art can be. And besides, you know, beauty, meaning, uh, design, all, all these things, it, it, there are so many benefits one can gain out of connecting with the art and waking up the artist within. So this is what I wanted to tell you at, at, at the outset, so, so we know where we are marching. Okay, now, as I said before, the most important thing is beginning. Yeah, beginning. 
what is the first step? How do we start? What is the inner uh, stand we have? How do we stand to the beginning of something? Look, I will give you an example. The beginning of the fugue by Bach in C major. It's called, it's old chorale called Come Holy Spirit. Of course, Come Holy Spirit and Spirit, you know, fire. So. <laughs> Did you notice what kind of energy is there? Well, you notice there are patterns that repeat themselves. Well, that is the subject, the thema, the identity, the brand, if you want, which is at the beginning. And that one pushes everything into action. So let us look at this brand, at least at this subject, at this thema subject. So. <laughs> You see, there are different qualities. Now, can we now, instead of just liking or disliking, that doesn't count. Can we now just really listen exactly how the qualities are changing? Because it's not about music, it's about something else also. You will see, on the archetypal level, it starts like this. Yes? Can you hear? The first step is direction. One could say like a vision. There. Yes? Well, everybody has vision, right? So, so what? <laughs> so what's the next step? If you have a vision, how do you reinforce the vision? How do you get everybody? So. So the second step is this, like this. See, the, the second step is reinforcing the vision by involving em, a, emotionally, getting everybody involved, you know, sort of mobilizing above and below, and then once again, direction, once again. <laughs> Can you hear that? So you take everything, the heights and the depths, and then again the direction. So, and what's there? That's not enough. It's not enough. There is one thing missing. Yes, the last thing is action. Bah, 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 bah. See, the last thing is courage determination to get things embodied, to get them going. We see, so you see, in the beginning, we have three things, vision, mobilization, and courage and uh, daring to go, move it, bring it into reality. So <laughs> it's archetype. You see, one could also say something else, doesn't matter. But you can see these three qualities are there. And look, I, I, I had interpret this very much to this, our situation right now, here above. Below, below, I say, is digitalization. We must involve digital transformation. But above, <laughs> above, I call it's, it's humanization. Humanization. So there must be relationship between going deep into digital and going high into the human in order to create dynamic balance. And so therefore, I want to say, this, people say, is the new normal, right? And I say, who wants normal? We must go above, beyond normal. That, that's my mantra lately. The normal, normality created situation which we are. So we must go beyond normality. And that's where the arts come in. Okay, so now uh, just uh, maybe one more uh, subject and then we start. One more beginning, because I'm looking out of my window in my garden where I have my, I just planted so many trees and I made biodynamic bi compost pile, you know, I can see it from here. Spring is coming. So listen to this.
This is the famous, the beginning of the famous spring sonata. It's called Spring, Opus 24 by Beethoven. Yes, it start, but it sounds really like a spring. Let us look at this beginning. How is that? Can you see the fresh air coming from the south? So. Yes, what do we hear? Something like this. Midlife crisis. There is a question at the end. You see, young, everything born, everything's will be rosy, great career, then it gets down and down and down, and it gets down and sad. suddenly there is a zero point, a big question. Can you hear that? It's like half of the life. It, it, so much light and gets darker, darker, darker. <laughs> Midlife crisis. And now, uh -huh. still question, but rising up. So, and now at about 45, you say, it's now or never. Then it says, now. Oh, you see, this is called out of the box. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then you say it's now or never, and how then? Happy end. And look, you see, I just want to show you a little motive. It goes through seven stages, goes down into a crisis, doesn't know where to go, and then rises up, still questioning, and then giving a gas and say, now, let's move. 40, 50. Remember, if you are not so young, and then happy end. Well, let's see. So, you see, it's not enough to just play beautifully or so. One has to find absolute meaning in every little phrase in the music. And then that is something on that level we call archetypal level. So one can relate this to different domains of life. And in this case, leadership. How do we lead? So I would like now to take a short, beautiful masterpiece. And with this one, we are going to go through the whole thing quickly. And we are going to observe, we are going to look, how can we, how can we lead through dilemma? How can we lead through a problem that is there? Does that make sense? Look, let me first get you acquainted with this Siciliana. Siciliana is an old dance. It comes from Sicily, obviously, which is water, you know, uh, but it could be also other place. Yeah, but look, it is like this uh, rhythm. yourself being in a gondol in Venice at night with the full moon shining and so on and it is slight you know on the water but, uh, but imagine you are there in this beautiful uh, surroundings and uh, full of the heart is full of something of love or something listen <laughs> so what do we observe we have something rising from the bottom like this and then from above it says yeah. it's disconnected you have one could say yearning reality as it is and coming back from the other side ideal where you want to be but you can't, you can't, you are reaching out to the stars, but the stars say, no, you're not ready. You have to do something before. So it's disconnected. <laughs> Can you feel this dilemma? It is really a dilemma. How do we connect to the highest potential 
but you need first attempt doesn't work it's it's stretches but it falls down again so this is what we want to now follow and see how the fine masterpiece in organic way leads us to different stages there are different stages and each stage one could say is the next level now if you look back in your life you can notice how you change levels as well there are significant changes and thresholds in life when you notice ah since then i have different a relationship to the world and so on and and then again and again it never ends if you are creative or you are already pensionist when you are 35 you know or younger there are people like that too unfortunately they get stuck so about development so let us now go to this masterpiece we will start in the left corner and then we will go on this journey so it starts like this I hope you can see this is the nucleus I hope you can see my painting there on the wall now this is the nucleus let us start and observe what happens <laughs> to perform the whole piece so don't be disappointed that I keep cutting but I really would like your attention now to go exactly to the process so we can then see what is the as consequence for the leadership so you heard what happened at the beginning it says one goes down otherwise it goes up that one says you must Ooh, yes yes better not yeah, can you hear? They are disconnected. Of course, uh, it doesn't look, if I, if I play beautifully, you won't notice. Like a normality in life, it seems at first glance, everything is fine. But then you start <laughs> uncovering stones and so on. There are all kind of demons coming out and the worms. Uh, yeah, so, so look, you have here, you have here. Ooh, 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 ah. Ah. And then there is in the middle, there is a crisis. In the middle, there is a crisis. Let's do this once again. Observe this, this battle, if you want. Crisis. Can you hear? Of course, I can play nicely. And now, suddenly appears the gateway, the gateway to go through and try it again and do it better. So it's, here is the, so you can go through, through this gateway and you start it again with different attitude. It goes now in another direction. It's called modulation in music. Never mind. So coming in what is new the really new thing is this you see suddenly there is one direction one line that goes three times set there in this direction and the rest is growing around yeah growing it's growth so, so there is a direction and growth Everybody likes growth, right? So let's see where it brings us. Hi, 
High point. Can you hear? It's like a big question. Is growth all that we want in life? you notice what happened well there was a high point and then suddenly less and less and then came a very strange feeling i call it surrender to surrender to the inner feeling of i don't know maybe there is something very deep in myself that i must give space to emerge i cannot command it eternal feminine in us i don't know what is it so you have to surrender almost you have to resign to it i call it productive resignation power power of power of productive resignation that is goethe it's not mine so power so you resign to something so more more and more then less and less and less and less and then here you resign and then comes a new gateway new gateway to go into this inner mood now i want to tell you something very important everybody talks about transformation you know digital transformation whatever transformation sorry but transformation usually it's just rearrangement because real transformation actually hurts yeah something has to die so something new can take place so it is something very subtle very intimate it's very intimate which means we have to dare to step into this inner temple where there is the intimacy precondition where there is redemption possible so we have to yeah it, it, it's, it's 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 very intense it's very inward sorry but that's very we are very soft as human beings that's why we can start from there transforming things it cannot go out of command control you know that's just tool it's a tool we need sometimes so let's go through this gateway and see i will start once again at high point <laughs> place we are now is the same the same identity as at the beginning except now it is listening to each other before they were pulling apart and now they are really question answer question answer listen the, the lower one upper one next lower one Remember the octave from the beginning when I started? Octave. So let me paint it. So here we go.
Yeah, can you see? Now it's like a flower. It is intimate. Let's go on. What happens then? it is now it's transformed what used to be all the time below is now above and what was above is now below yeah here that is now here and that is now here can you hear that means a free space opened and you don't need to be the one constantly yearning for something and not getting it it's now switch over <laughs> some new quality yes power after we have gone through this in intimate sphere now everything changes again now both voices join together they are not anymore above or below or below or above they become one and they go with enormous power forward one they go one resurrection out of this yes they go whoa, whoa. And then comes the end. They become one melody with harmonic, uh, of course, uh, accompaniment. So, hear it again. And what happens at the end? letting go you see when we get to the zenith of power what is the next stage where do you go then there is only one way to go forward to drop power to let go because then so let's go because if you are master of doing that then the world responds the let come suddenly things reverse things come from periphery i call it peripheral leadership style so what do we hear coming from periphery Intensely, we hear the essence of the whole masterpiece. Once again, we come back to the beginning, but absolutely confident. You don't need to open your mouth as a leader. You just are who you are and things move. So let me paint that.
as you can see, exactly the opposite. So here we have this triangle of three most important stages of life. This is wisdom. This is maturity. This is your grail, basically. Okay, we are through. Now, if you look at this, can you notice this is like a seed and roots and here come the stems and the leaves and growth and then growth diminishes because flowers are coming and after flowers we have fruits and then at the end when the fruit goes put you in in the earth new seeds spring forth for the next generation so you can see organic growth in a musical masterpiece goethe's aesthetics stands and falls with this idea that nature cannot evolve further it must go through us because we are nature creative nature humanity and then we create new nature which is art but this has to be organic art so it you see it all ties together whole human biography a whole cycle of the plant world and a cycle of learning how to lead I would like now to open conversation and at the end we need three minutes and a half or four so I can play it once again as a whole, as a conclusion of this lecture, if that is okay. Hannes, may I now ask any questions that may be coming and then I will please give me at the end when we arrive five to seven Central European time, we stop conversation and then I play it as a conclusion. Is, it, is that a deal? Sounds great, Mia. Yeah. So, tell me. Thank you so much for this inspiration. So now we will move to our discussion. Please feel free to put any question you might have into the Q&A section. Then we can discuss with Miha. So let me start this conversation with the following question, Miha. Why is it so important to talk about the art of leadership today? Yeah, Hannes, of course, this is a very fundamental question. We live in a society where we became many professional idiots, I say. Everybody knows his or her stuff, but we don't know how to connect. So art can represent, a, I call it resonance platform, on which we can, as a very different individuals and professionals, we can start learning from each other and connecting across this divide, because it's urgently necessary that we talk to each other and understand each other and support each other. So that's one thing. The other thing, when you're involved with art, you wake artists in yourself and you can start working with the emerging future. I call it not working with the past patterns, but with that which is coming at us and tell you what is happening right now is no, it's not a cookie, you know, it's quite challenging what is happening. So how do we learn this flexibility to be able to deal with any situation, no matter what? So that means you have to be as an artist, always ready to change, to, to transform, to reinforce, to whatever. And, and that is why my method, when I work with, with, um, with my clients, that is why I first take them through the masterpiece and then I have them in groups, also virtually, that works. Have them in groups so they transfer what they experience in the music into a group poetry. Imagine 10 engineers suddenly together they make a poem out of this experience, but they put into the poem their own challenges and resolutions out of their company. So they are learning how to make this transfer and again put it in a form of art. And nobody is a poet, usually. Some they were when they were young, but they forgot about it. But you see, they, they sort of go on with another artistic form. And then they have to decide how to perform this poem. Somebody reads, the others make motions, whatever. Everybody gets involved. And only after performance and my master class, so I work with them, of course, then we go to the debriefing. Then we talk about what is this experience? What does it mean for your challenges and then we bring it home so to say to the business setting and i tell you it is very productive it is so productive because they have made the productive creative detour and so they are very fresh people get so many ideas and and you know they are empowered to to start implementing thank you for sharing these insights about this transformation process Mia. so let me build on that so 
you just outlined the, the steps, but can you maybe elaborate a bit more? How does your method work? So what is the role of art in driving this organization transformation? How does it link back to the work every day of our leaders? Look, uh, Hannes, I, I assume that people operate on 5% of their potential. <laughs> We all, you know, including myself. So I assume that. So my, my job is to unplug this wealth of um, diverse individual potentials that are out there, but they think that they have to only be very good performers in their very often very narrowly, bigger company, narrower it is, uh, the competence and job description and all that. You see, and, and I try to, to, to squash those, those border lines that are there and, and boxes and, and take them out and say, humanity, that is where everything is hidden. So how can we bring that to the surface? And that is where art is extremely helpful. It's not for art that they should become art lovers. I don't care. I just know out of my half a century experience, intense experience, that art can really unlock all those taboos, one could say. And uh, therefore, what, what else should I say? Look, if you look at this structure, if you decide to implement something, well, people first are, everybody has their own opinion. And then you find one way, direction. And then you know that is, that's not enough if you have direction. You, you have to change yourself in your attitude. How to how do you work with your people? So you start listening, have intimate conversations. You, what I call asking the Parsifal question. I will elaborate on that right away. But then once that is there, then new power, new strengths come out of out of group. But you see, in German language, there is a genius differentiation of, you say, togetherness. You say Gesamt or Gemein. That is in German. It's not in English. Gemein means all together, you know, like a, yeah, undifferentiated, just running in the same direction. Gesamt means everybody in their absolute individual standing yet together. So this is beautiful differentiation. How do you support individual growth? And at the same time, how do you put people into very intense work together? Full of contradictions, mind you, because contradictions and polarities are very healthy. If somebody tells me, I say, how are you? How are you doing? They say, oh, all right. I say, if you are only oh, all right, then you are very bad. Either you are fantastic or see to it that you get there. Because, you know, just sort of mediocre, mediocrity is death of arts. It's about genius. We strive for genius is what's really make matters in arts, not excellence. Excellent is everybody in arts, of course. In, in, in management, if you're excellent, you think at the top. No, that's beginning point. What is at stake is genius. What is genius? Uniqueness, once and never again. Stars, Sternstunde. Yeah, so you talked about these contradictions that we face as leaders every day. So what, what might be the secrets to unlocking the willingness to open the heart, mind, and will to embrace these contradictions. That you yes, that's the point. I mean, you already answer yourself. If, if, if we have dilemmas, we must learn how to hold on them, not to just go for one or the other. That's not solution to go left or right. No, we have to endure to stay in the contradiction as long as we can. Because in this process of intensifying polarities, This is also good in theory of life, you know, polarity and intensification, polarität und Steigerung. This, if we know how to stand in polarity long enough, then suddenly these dilemmas disappear, very strange. And we look back and say, oh, that was no big deal. But when we are in the middle of it, we, we are crying, we are screaming, you know, it's horrible. But when we know how to stand in it, then we look back and say, oh, that was... Kinderspiel, you know, no big deal. So and, and so we grow. So polarities are there for us to grow. You know, there is not good and bad in the world. There is something that is intensely in the middle, and then you have different types of bad on the left, on the right, in front, in the back. You know, demonology, I call it. Yeah. Okay, so, so in different sense, would you say that art offers a type of emotional reset in order to be able to start this conversation in an organization? 
Yes, this is, you, you put this on my tongue, you know, I, I suffer when I think that there are now millions at this moment of conferences and they are grinding, you know, grinding uh, abstract and uh, rational way, which is necessary. I don't say it's bad, but art could so much help. I just a few days ago, I had an international conference. It was for biodynamic farmers, you know, and what I did is just at the beginning, a little bit of music, everything changes instantly. So you start conference full of these feelings. You notice, ah, we must not forget the feelings. It's so important. And we have to open up, not just, you know, be pragmatic and like it's too much of that, but it's necessary as well. But that's the point. How can we introduce into, especially now into this digital situation, how can we introduce human warmth willingness to open up and listen if you you know i have a special um, seminar that i conduct in in my home native slovenia because in in eastern part of slovenia there was in the ninth century long ago more than thousand years ago the you have heard about parsifal many some people and you say people don't know so well yeah well wagner wrote his last opera parsifal but parsifal was really archetypal medieval knight who who was the best knight you know he was he didn't even want to join king arthur he was much more important so he he was like a best manager you know he did everything nobody was everybody fell off the course when they confronted him so and yet he had to fall down he had to go on to, to this zero point because when he came to the grail castle he didn't ask the question the right question so then his misery began and at the end you know he comes out really who he is but in this I take managers to this landscape where you can hear that story. So you can still hear the, the hoofs of the horses <laughs> echoing from thousand years. You know, we go through these stages and talk about this story and music. And this story is like story of the learning for managers. I'm, why I'm saying that? Because if you hear the story, if you experience that in the nature, if you're in a cave, you know, the conversation of Travis and so on. So it then, then result is that everything you do afterwards directly related to your challenges in leadership it becomes so different so different you suddenly have a big uh, shall i say huge scope of choices and possibilities to go through dilemmas great thank you so much for for sharing this me and uh, looking at the listen we should question. We should get from ESMT once a group to come to this to make a, a special event. I will do it for you. Yeah. Hopefully. So what did you want to say? Sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm excited. So, Biha, maybe before we come to, to your closure, one more uh, question. Yeah. That is, what can all of us, all the leaders in the audience, everyone who's listening to our webinar, do differently starting next week to awake the artist within us, to really make this transformation happen? Well, I imagine that everybody has in some way, at some point in life, started some kind of mastery of martial arts or musical something, and then you dropped it. Yeah, because you know, life is hard and pressures are there and you have to, yeah. So the problem is that we do not have opportunity to practice to practice a discipline daily. It, it's the same happened to me. You know, I have to do a lot of administration and marketing and communications and, 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 and. So when I get to the point when I see I'm falling apart, I throw it on the corner, pick up my violin and practice and work. And then I'm again restored a whole, I'm a whole human being again. And then I can do again that, that paper stuff, you see. So I do not criticize the fact that as a leader, we have a lot of stuff to do that is not nice. Yeah, that's, that's life. Except it would be very helpful to rhythmically every day, whatever you decide, start waking up that artist in you in a rhythmical way again and again. In the future, of course, I have better ideas still. For instance, I know that every company that will want to be able to survive and go creatively into the future will have to create a special place called in a company called inspiration center because i look at the company in anthropomorphic way i look at the company like a human being because we are microcosmos human being has everything that is in the world 
in the small. Huh? So if you look at the human head and all this left, right, we are left, right. And that, of course, in, in brain science, that has been over and over uh, already discovered that, that we are of the balance if we are only on the rational side. So how do we bring the right side, so to say, the, the dark side, the creative side, the mysterious, the magic side into the play in a company? Well, you can't do that in a boardroom. There is too much pressure, too many numbers that have to be done. And so I'm not criticizing, but I say the other half is missing. We don't have balance creative balance. So in the future, there will be an inspiration center, I tell you, 100% sure, because that's what humanity needs. And then this interplay between these two styles of running company is going to make it very creative. Okay, 100% sure. Great. That, that's a very fascinating vision. Yeah. So we should bring it to the ESMT. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Great. Oh, you are doing it already. I know. <laughs> already quite far there. Congratulations. <laughs> this uh, webinar today is, is one part of it. So uh, yeah, before we, we close, um, now I think you wanted to play something again for us, right? I, I wanted to play this once through. So everybody uh, can follow now this process of transformation. And I hope that we can take it from here. I see this as a beginning, not at the end of something. All right. Very good. So let us listen to this Siciliana by Bach from the first solo sonata, the third movement. <laughs>
Amazing. Thank you very much, Mia. Thank you for your fantastic presentation and our conversation. Thanks also to everyone in our audience today for joining and for participating. The feedback uh, we get here is uh, fantastic. So I think an hour is really short, but I hope we could start a spark to light the journey of bringing your masterpieces to life. Bye bye. So bye. And we're looking forward to seeing you soon at ESMT Berlin. Have a wonderful evening.